Hi everybody, it's Keith from Honey Bee Honey. I have an interesting situation today that I just wanted to, before I do anything, I wanted to kind of take you along with me. Uh, this is a hive that I overwintered as a nuke. Uh, behind me, you can see there's a little hive there with a brass top. That's because when I was at work the other day, uh, they swarmed. So my wife and my son caught that swarm and uh, went in and looked, found out that it was the queen from this hive. So the, the mother queen was a Caucasian queen I had marked white uh, from last year. And she is now in that hive. So I'll have to move that hive and then bring them back to the yard if I want. But regarding this hive, this hive is now queenless. When I inspected them yesterday, I found dozens of queen cells. Couple that with another hive that you'll see in a minute over there. Uh, they had a drone layer. So this is spring, uh, today's May 8th, May 8th, and it, all kinds of wonky things happen in spring, and I'm hoping to get some more videos out to you soon about different things like European fallow brood and other spring problems that you occur, but that happen, that you'll find. The situation over there was I found a, a, a queen in there, but nothing but drone eggs, drone, dr drone cells. So they were torpedo shaped cells. Now a lot of beekeepers would just unite them with another hive. So I found the queen, I, I had to kill her. Uh, it looked like they requeened in the fall sometime and she either didn't mate or, or was not a good queen in the first place. Whatever the case may be, it doesn't matter. She was a drone layer. So there are nothing but drone cells in that hive and two thirds of them, uh, or I should say one third of them are, are all drones anyway. So they have no queen, they have no future. This hive, on the other hand, has a surplus of queen cells and right now brood. So I have doubled their capacity, this hive. So when you have a hive that's swarming and you don't want them to swarm, the first thing you need to do is open up the brood nest. You can do that various different ways, some of which I've discussed in, in uh, previous videos. Check out my checkerboarding videos and uh, swarm control videos, spring, spring control videos. I'm going to do something different this this way because so there is a there is a playoff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take two frames out of here of brood with queen cells. Now I want to make sure that I leave them queen cells because they are without a queen. So there's the gamble. I'm taking away I'll take away about half of their queen cells probably, and that means half of their chances of rearing a good queen. However, they have all good looking queen cells in there. They're um, I'm sure they're all healthy. That's not a problem because all the brood in here is very healthy. They look, this hive looks fantastic. But there's, there's a chance, you know, that the concern right now is that they've decided they were going to swarm and they were probably considering an after swarm. So once I take away these queen cells, hopefully they'll reconsider swarming again. The gamble is, is that they may still do that anyway. I don't know for sure. It's always a gamble. The good thing is, is that I'll be giving them a queen in the process. And you may be wondering, well, with the other hive, you know, it's going to be another 30 days before that queen's eggs start hatching. If she mates successfully, it's still a gamble and you're right. All of that is true. But if the queen mates successfully and I see eggs and I see some, some improvement, what I can also do is take from other healthy hives frames of cat brood and put it in that hive and build them up that way. And what it amounts to is when I have hives that I'm worried about swarming, if I take and if, if I open up the brood nest by taking out some of their cat brood and replacing it with a couple frames of, of uh, pooled comb, the queen's just going to come back and lay in those, those combs. But all those bees that would have hatched will cause a break in the brood cycle, which is good for varroa control, will help the weak hives, and it will keep that hive from swarming so that I can hopefully uh, make a little bit more honey than I otherwise may have if they would have swarmed. So everyone's needs are different uh, and every situation really is different. 
In this case, I'm gonna take a gamble. I'm gonna take a couple frames out of here and I'm gonna put it in that hive. Now in that other hive, I've already taken out two frames. So when we get to the other hive, it's gonna be quick. But let's go ahead and do it. And uh, we'll see how it goes. This is a Caucasian, queen, uh, Caucasian hive. And so I will also be re introducing new genetics to the other hive as well, so. Okay, so this top hive body really has nothing in it. It has some honey in it. Uh, I took it off of a hive that died earlier in the year. You can see the bees have already, I, I put it on them yesterday. Again, this was a double, double brood nest nuke. So it had 10 frames in there. It's now got 20 frames. So double the capacity. So that alone may have stopped them from wanting to swarm again. But bees are kind of like people in that they are creatures of habit. And if they had already decided they were gonna swarm, it's highly likely that just opening up the brood nest between their primary swarm and their secondary swarm would have done no good. I don't know, it, it, may, it may and it may not. It's always a chance and it's different with different hives. But because of that, so it, I know you can't see in here, but this whole hive body is full of bees. You might be able to see when I lift it up. You see that? So obviously this hive is, is very strong. Now I just need to find at least three or four frames of, uh, at least three or four frames that have queen cells and then I'll move, I'll move a little closer and show you, but these are actually gonna be swarm cells as opposed to uh, an emergency queen cell for, for beginners, as opposed to an emergency queen cell or a supersedure cell. These are swarm cells that you'll see in the spring. They'll be numerous. They'll always be at the bottom of frames. And because I changed, so you can see there's brood on that frame. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, and it's on the very outside, which is not something that you typically see. The reason it's like that is because I took two, two stacks of, of hives, two, two stacks of five frames and combined it into one. Um, so I'm not sure which, which frames have the, the, the swarm cells on them or not at this point. I remember this frame, it's all drone. It's a drone frame, drone comb frame. You see how numerous they are. It's, it's really incredible and, they, and consider that they already swarmed once, just a few days ago. Healthy, healthy brood pattern there. It's the same on the other side. No swarm cells though. Okay, this is what I wanna show you is in working a hive, normally there's a queen in there that you're, that you're hoping not to kill, of course. Let me see what this frame holds here. Pollen carriers, eggs and larvae. No swarm cells though. Actually, there are no eggs or larvae. This is what I want you to see. So when you're working a hive, you wanna keep two sets of frames and it'll become apparent later. But what I'm gonna do is take these end bars, this, this section right here. And as I put it in, I'm gonna slide that end bar down along the end bar on the other frame. And now when I put it in there, there's a normal gap here, but these can't be squeezed any tighter or anything of that nature. Let's go to the next frame. The, the reason I don't want frames all over in here is be, usually because there's a queen in here somewhere, and there actually could be a queen in here. One of those queens could have hatched overnight. That often happens, you know, a day or two after their swarm. I will tell you, I don't hear a queen. I'm gonna do this the same thing now. So what I'm doing is kind of, as I do it, if there are bees on either of the frames, it kind of pushes them out of the way without squishing them. So that's one benefit. The other benefit, it keeps it cleaner and it keeps them in order. Uh, now these next five frames are the ones that were in the upper hive body. So I'm assuming these are gonna be the ones where I saw all the queen cells. Never really looked at the bottom frames too much. That's an unpulled frame. That's okay. This is unpulled and I put it in the center because I want them to pull that. 
Uh, one one side was pulled, one, the other side wasn't pulled. But they will do that. All right. So I got four frames here with possible queen cells on them. All right. There's a queen cell that has hatched. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right there. Either hatched or it was broke apart on the next frame, actually. It could have happened, too. And then right here, you can see this comb hanging down. That is a good queen cell. That's a good queen cell. It's the only one on the frame, though. It's the only swarm cell on the frame. The others that you see that are larger are drone cells. That's the only queen cell. So I don't really want to disturb that. Again, slide the end bars along. So in this case, I'm going to make, I'm going to err on the side of caution for this, this hive. I'm going to make sure they have queen cells for sure. Here's another queen cell fully formed. That's just a queen nubbin. There's probably nothing in there. Queen cell nubbin, we call them. Or I call them. I don't know what everyone else calls them. Um, and then there is a queen cell here. And that looks to be it. So this has two very good queen cells and one that is still viable. And it has a lot of cat brood. You see that? A lot of cat brood. They had started to put honey in there. This is my choice for the other hive if I, if I only can pick one. If I can only pick one with a couple swarm cells on it, that's fine. Uh, but I do want to put some brood in there in that other hive as well. So that they have brood hatching. And then here, that's all drone brood on the bottom there for the most part. But I can see through the, but if you look here, Swarm cell, swarm cell, swarm cell, swarm cell. These two swarm cells are not capped yet. They're not fully formed, which means if one of these queens dies or, or there's a problem with there, they've still got queen cells in there that will hatch later. So that's perfect. This is a perfect frame to leave this colony because they got two chances. Actually, you know, they have actually four or five chances, but what I mean is two different time periods where if, if one of these, something happens to one of these queens, they go out to mate, they don't come back, they've still got a couple queen cells there. Um, if these develop into mature, like pupa from the queen, when the queen comes back, she'll go in and she'll kill those, but that's once she's come back. So uh, this, this is a great frame to leave this colony. So I'm going to leave this, this frame for this colony. It would be a great frame to have on a, in either colony, to, to be honest, but since they're both queenless. But since this is the uh, hive that started all, I want to give them better chances than the other hive, I guess. And then there is drone brood. And there is, there is a queen cell here at the very bottom, just a single one that's not fully formed yet. Uh, they're still working on it, so. So there's that. So my choice in this decision anyway, is to leave them this queen cell, this frame with those queen cells on it. I'm gonna take this frame, and then I'm gonna take a frame that has brood on it. All right, I'm gonna take this frame. So that has a small amount of cat brood, enough to really help to boost the other colony, but not enough to hurt this one significantly. So I've made my two choices. I want these two frames, okay? So now, let's put the hive back together. So this is where it comes in handy when you have a colony and you're tearing it apart. You can move all the frames at once back over without hurting anybody or a queen especially by just moving all the frames. And then you only have to close one gap. You see? You only have to close the one gap between the two frames. And then you would normally be done, but um, of course I'm... 
operating differently. This frame has brood in it. So what I'm going to do is move all of these four frames together. Now, I mean all of these frames together, and I'm just going to put two empty combs on the side here. When you do get to where you want to close that final gap, you may have to smoke down there to get bees out of the way. And then once you, you can look down there and as soon as they're out of the way, you can close it. And you do each side independently of the other. So you don't smash anybody. So now I got room for two more frames in here and I will go get those frames. Okay, got a couple frames for them here. You can see a lot of activity. That's because they've been open for so long for the most part. Remember to always squeeze your frames tight together. Okay, so now I gotta do is, all I gotta do is sh put that back on here and shake these bees back in there. So there's two ways to do it. I could sh shake them right now, but then it's gonna be hard for me to get that hive body on there. But I think I'll do it anyway. So I just need to shake all the bees off of this and then take it over to the other hive. You can see the nectar that's coming out. It's actually honey that's gonna be it's actually honey now. A lot of beekeepers refer to it as nectar because it's not cured honey. There's actually bees hatching out of this right now. I'll try to refocus on this. You can see a bee hatching out of there right now. I get as many bees off as you can because they will fight with the other hive. So now all I'm going to do is close them up. This is going to involve uh, you got to smoke them down a little bit. It's a little harder when you've been in them a long time like this. You can see they're not aggressive towards me. They're not aggressive towards me, but uh, they are. They are getting to be a little. She's not trying to sting me. She's just resting. will return to normal here pretty soon for him. Let's go to the other hive. Okay, so this is the other hive. You can see them fanning here. The reason is, is because when I went into them earlier, they had no queen, or they had a queen. They no longer do. What I did was I had to kill the queen, and she's right down in there. That's her body. I put her there for a reason. I wanted them to know that they were queenless. You can see them fanning. That's the result. That's how you know that the, the whole colony knows now that their queen is dead. Uh, they're confused. They're also fairly aggressive. They will be probably when I go into them. And that's just because they're highly stressed. Fortunately, next time we come into them, they probably won't be because I'm gonna give them some queen cells right now and some brood to boost their strength and to give them a, a new queen. So let's put those frames in there. I got them behind the hive here. What I did was on the top here, uh, the top of this hive was where all the bees were. And there was, they were basically on four different main frames. Shake them off. They're basically on four different main frames and I, it was, it would have been these four frames. It was actually over here. I centered it and now all the bees are basically on this frame and this frame. But as soon as I put that brood in there, that's gonna change. Now, if you're doing this in a cold climate, one thing you have to, to 
worry about is how cold is it going to get during the night. I know that for the next few nights it'll be fine and there, you can see, hopefully you can see, there's a bee actually like halfway out right there. So I know that over the next couple days most of these bees are going to hatch. They're, they're usually within a couple days of each other so uh, those bees will hatch. Another thing I know is that fairly soon these queen cells are going to hatch. So here, here is the, a really nice queen cell. There's the start of one. And then here is the other, right there. So there's two queen cells in here. Ideally, I would rather have more than two. But these aren't ideal conditions, so we just have to work with what we can work with. So they, they have the capability now to make their own queen. And no matter what happens, the brood that I put in there will hatch and it'll strengthen the hive, give them a little bit more time. So as bees are dying off in the hive, there are still some hatching. So those, those bees will be hatching for the next, say, week, uh, at, at which point it's all cat brood in there. There are no eggs, there are no larvae, so everything will stop. But the queen will hopefully go out and mate and uh, check back. We, it takes a while for all this to happen where the queen hatches, goes out, mates, comes back and starts laying eggs. That's when you know you have your queen back and that's also, no, that's also when you know that she's capable of laying eggs. The problem then is you still have to determine if she was mated properly. So you have to wait another, I think uh, 13 days or so before they cap that cell, 13 to 14 days, somewhere around there, before they cap that cell and when they cap it, that's when you'll know. If it's a, uh, if it's all drones, you'll know the queen did not mate properly or something went wrong. So you, you really, it takes a long time for you to know that, but we'll see how they do and I'll take you along. This by the way is hive number six. Um, haven't had any problems with them for years. The queen that was in here before, uh, I think was a 2014 queen. So she isn't that old, but uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. I really don't know what happened to her. All I know is that they tried to re... The queen that I pulled out of there today was not marked, so I know that they had requeened. I just don't know when. Uh, probably in the fall. They, they really only started showing signs of, of declining in strength in the last month or so. But the weather's been crazy with my work schedule. Good days have been when I've been working. I haven't been able to check on them. And uh, I'm also, I also have a lot of homework I'm doing, so... Wasn't able to get out there till today. Noticed they were queenless, took care of the situation. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I, will, I will definitely follow up on this for you uh, in future videos. I know I'll have enough time to do at least that. And we'll see you then. Thanks.